How does it feel to have created a viral sensation? It's great. And as we speak now, I think that number may have doubled. We're going viral in India at the moment, which is, as you know, a gigantic market. It's the nano banana trend. Does the internet absolutely lose its Nano banana. Nano banana AI trend. I definitely did not expect the reception, but it's been incredible to see. And I think that's what makes it viral, that it's personal. I am Benigno Uria. I'm a scientist at DeepMind, and I work on generating images. I'm Yu Cheng Tu. I also work on generating images, and at some point, video as well. The most viral thing at the moment is this this figuring prompt. I don't know if you've seen it, where people <laughs> make a figuring of themselves, yeah. and they put themselves on the screen and on the box. And, and there's a 3D to me program that, in the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, we never expected that to go viral, right? Because the model is really good at like character consistency. So we expected people to change their clothes or make themselves look like they are in the 80s or something. But someone explained to me that the best thing about that is that you see yourself three times in the picture. And that's why it's gone viral. So we should do more of those. It's really wild. I mean, y'all are basically taking what was like a crazy multi-node comfy UI workflow with like Laura fine tuning and making it like a text prompt or a couple of image references. And that's absolutely wild. I'm kind of curious, despite that power, why did you not think it would go viral? The really nice thing about this model that I've also really appreciated is, is that it makes all of these processes really accessible to the general user. Like going through all these steps of um, maybe modifying an image that you have or putting together, like stitching together creative ideas that you may have. Um, and rather than going through all of these different processes or models that may have been harder to access in the past, if you don't know how to play around with these like open source models and so on, now it's a lot more accessible. And I think that really speaks to maybe why it went viral as well. Somebody was putting a picture from Google Earth with an arrow and was saying like, what can I see from there? And it it does it, right? But then there was this other one where people were combining San Francisco on one side and New York, and that obviously doesn't exist, right? Like, they are not together on the map. And an arrow, and then it generates an image that is like the skyline of New York, but you can see in front Alcatraz. So it was like, okay, that's generalization. That's amazing. Like you prompt it with an image, generalizes. That's for sure not in the data set. The thing for me, and I, I think, I guess this is also, also something that's been really emphasized in the model has been the consistency or character consistency that we've seen. Once the model has enough world knowledge and understanding to carry out these tasks, it really is able to fill in these different gaps that maybe you wouldn't have expected from the beginning. So the point that you were making about like consistency across different angles and so on, once the model has seen enough data and has been given enough world knowledge, you can imagine if I ask for, say, the back of someone's head, you're not going to imagine that there's going to be like a waterfall coming out of someone's head or something implausible. There's some set of images that are reasonable, you know, based on what we think is common sense and what we've seen in the world. And at that scale, that's what the model is able to produce. Like you can ask Gemini to tell you a story and, and just generate an image after each paragraph. For example, I like creating biographies of people, like historical figures, like different philosophers. And I tell you, okay, tell me the story of John Locke's life. And after each paragraph, make a picture in the style of an anime. And you can get like 15 pictures, you know, with, I feel like, our users haven't really like found that yet, and I hope they will, because it's super cool. It opens a lot of extra uh, use cases. I've tried it more for like thumbnail generation. Here's like the idea for a video. Come up with a bunch of thumbnail ideas, and it would give me A, B, C, and D, and then be able to like compare it to. Take us back to developing the models. Is there a moment in testing that really surprised you? The, the first photo I had at hand was uh, an old photo of, of me in black and white. And I was like, okay, take this photo of black and white, now colorize it, now increase the resolution. And I was getting an image after another. And then, okay, zoom out. And it was making that, like, imputing everything that was around me, like the, the, the table with food that was not actually there, it was not visible. I was like, wow, this is a very impressive model. Sometimes a, a bit strange that, for example, it gave me blue eyes, right? Because it was a, a black and white photo and it was a bit too generous with the <laughs> muscles when I zoomed out. I was like, oh, okay, maybe, maybe we train it on to, to good looking people. But. <laughs> you know, on that note, it's funny. I took uh, one of my grandparents' photos, similarly black and white, 
and my grandpa used to be in the army. And so he's like in an army uniform and that was reconstructed beautifully. The colors were right. And then my grandma was like, no, I wasn't wearing a white sari. I was wearing a light pink one. And of course, I just told the model, huh? you know, make it a light pink one. And they were both kind of blown away by mm -hmm. how good of a reconstruction it was. Humans are visual animals, right? Like we, we can ingest information a lot faster by looking at an image than by reading text. So the other day I was here in New York, I arrived, it was just pouring down. I asked Gemini, what can I do on a Sunday in New York in a rainy day? And it just output a wall of text and I didn't feel like reading it. So I just told it, okay, make an infographic <laughs> with it. <laughs> and it gave me a really beautiful infographic telling me, okay, just go to the med and do this, do that. Then go to cats to have, uh, you know, a pastrami sandwich. And yeah, it was really good. I could just absorb it in five seconds instead of having to read. I think what this model has scratched the surface of and that I feel pretty excited about, but maybe we're not there yet, is how useful the model could be for this type of interleaved or conversational use case, especially as a tool for people. Like, I think the fact that, you know, the model already Gemini had this image and text understanding, but the fact that now the model also has this high dimensional output space of images, I think really uh, maybe opens a door for interesting human AI interaction. And what I mean by this is like, okay, maybe I'm, I have like a knowledge seeking, information seeking query or something like that for something that's better expressed as a diagram or an image. And now the mm. model can actually decide, hey, to explain this concept rather than giving you, you know, all of this text or like all of this code, here's a diagram that maybe better illustrates the point that I'm trying to get at. Or like, this is a bit of a, like a, a stupid use case, but I think the visual understanding and the image output could be really useful for cases like I recently moved into a new flat. We have this thermostat that's actually impossible to use because the UI is so new age and fancy that it has like a bunch of touch screens and a bunch of different buttons, but it's not really clear like how to actually do the simplest thing of changing the temperature. And so what I do now is like I take a photo, yeah, I send this to the chatbot and say like, hey, what what is this model? Like, where do I find the instructions for this? And maybe it outputs some text telling me like some stuff step-by-step -step instructions. But what might be really nice is something more similar to a WikiHow article, like, hey, you have this thing, yeah. press this thing. Here's an illustration of what the next screen could look like. Now press this other thing. Um, so I, I'm really, really excited about the fact that now the model has this ability to produce these image-based outputs from image understanding and text understanding as well, and what types of uh, information this can help people with, not just for this like knowledge seeking type of situation, but also in the cases where maybe I want to collaborate with the model, work on a problem together. Um, all of these things, I think we're just scratching the surface of and could be really exciting as the model becomes more capable. That is very exciting. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, yeah, step-by-step -step instructions too. Yeah. Really cool infographics, mm. uh, charts and diagrams like, oh, this thing, I would assume it's like an Edward Tufte expert and will make like the best possible visualizations that you could imagine. Now you can have them be done on demand. There's a lot of debates on X or Twitter happening these days around like evals. How do you evaluate these models? How much of it is like taste? And it seems like a bit of an art and a science and dare I say, even a bit of a dark art? Like, what are y'all's stance on evals and how do y'all evaluate this model? Like what Benny was saying about the different categories is that it is possible to disentangle some of these things that are like easier to measure versus things that are harder to measure. Uh, for example, you can think about some things that are easier to measure, like instruction following. Uh, like if I ask the you know model to add a hat on top of my head, but it actually doesn't do that, that's a failure, clearly. Um, but there are also other categories of things that are harder to measure, like what Benny was saying about taste or aesthetics and so on. Sometimes we see that human evaluators like images that look AI generated. So they have this like plasticky type of look to them, maybe like shiny and oversaturated. We definitely we don't we don't want to release those models because it's it's kind of a like um, a look that is I say it by now, right? Like maybe two years ago, it was cool to generate images that look AI generated, but we definitely don't want them to look AI generated now. So, but surprisingly, human evaluators on, on the usual platforms often prefer those images to images that look more photorealistic. How do y'all think this is going to change storytelling? The thing that's been stuck in my head is like, holy shit, what if everyone's like pretty damn good intermediate to advanced Photoshop user now? Like you know, both of you have any uh, predictions about, you know, the implications of this tech as we go get past the, oh my God, I can put myself in, you know, a bunch of cool scenario stages and really understand the power in people's hands now. 
Models like Nano Banana can be more useful as like collaborative tools for artists. Um, so unlike you know a standalone like text to image model, which does a lot of the work for you, uh, I think what's really nice about the fact that we now have this you know uh, native image generation and image in the context is that now it can be seen as more of a collaborative partner. So one thing I was doing recently was like. And it's not really a you know super intelligent use case, but one that might be useful for creatives is like I like to take notes or like draw and sketch on paper, but it ends up being really annoying to have to like digitize this for the next step of my process because I have to find a scanner and then maybe use some like image editing software to clean up the scan and so on. And now Nano Banana is really able to like take this you know iPhone camera photo that I've taken and transform it to a, another stage where I can carry on with the rest of my creative process. And so really like uh, closing some of these gaps and making a bit, a bit more accessible, like I was saying earlier, I'm hoping will be a way to make these tools more useful as a collaborative partner for our creatives as well. Anything to add? Otherwise, I have to ask you all about video. I mean, when are we going to have a similar conversational <laughs> editing ability for video? There's a couple of these models out there that kind of started doing it. When are we going to have video on our hands? We don't work on video. So you would have to ask the VO team. They are the experts. That's so the most Google answer, answer ever. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously we want, as I said before, right, we want to cover all modalities. And the future right. is a single uh, entry point for everything. Mm. Nano Banana is, is pretty good. I would say it's state of the art, but it's not perfect yet. That's something I always tell people, like, it has to be perfect. Being 99% correct at text rendering is not enough. Like text is either correct or incorrect. It doesn't matter if there's one extra letter or one letter missing. It has to be 100%. And that's something that may be coming. Mm. Long text rendering. We care a lot about feedback. So as people stumble across like fairly remote or interesting use cases, these are all things that we're paying attention to and really excited and eager to learn from. Any speculation for how the tech you're building fits into, you know, AR glasses, VR in the future? Any thoughts there? Completely untethered from the roadmap. Gemini's original goal is, is to be the best model for any modality, right? Like to be able to input and output right. any modality from the start. That was the North Star of Gemini. And we're hoping to see this uh, transfer, we call, from different modalities, both in understanding and generation. Because there's only so much data out there. So you can get more data if you combine all modalities than if you just use text. And we are getting to the point, you know, like these models are so big and they use so much training data that you have to struggle to find more data. So we're hoping that by combining all these modalities, we will see transfer. But it's not something that we have focused for this version of the model. But maybe I cannot reveal more. Mm. Yeah, a multimodal in and out. That yeah. is the dream. I, I saw a video from Jubilabal where you were predicting that all media would be generated in the future. It would be not like 3D <laughs> rendered, or, <laughs> right? And I think at some point that may happen. Yeah. So all virtual experience will be generated maybe at some point. Definitely we could, I think, better photorealism than with, with the standard graphic rendering pipelines of the past. Uh, I think it would require a lot of compute. So either we make the model cheaper or, or we wait for the, for the GPUs to get there. But it may, it may be coming. I would say that Nana Banana is just the beginning and the Let's more go. exciting things are coming. Um, the future is going to be amazing. And I have to ask about the name. What is the story behind the name Nano Banana? Our product manager, uh, Nina, I think people call her Nana, um, Banana. And so <laughs> she had to come up with a name at, at like 2 a.m. in the morning for putting the model on LA Marina. And she came up with it and yeah, it went viral. And, and now, you know, People in marketing are studying, like, what was the success behind this naming? We have to learn from this experience. <laughs> Reproduce the sauce. That's amazing. And the fact yeah. that you all changed it in the Gemini app, too, to put the little banana icons, just chef's kiss. Congrats on all the success. I can't wait to see what modalities and capabilities y'all unlock next. Um, thank you so much for your time and really appreciate you uh, joining me today. Thank you so much. Yeah, for thanks for having us.